anatomy of the inguinal canal see this anatomy of inguinal canal is very very important not only in the exam point of view but also in the surgical point of view because when you go to the surgical wards invariably you will get a case of hernias where the your professor or a unit head will be asking about the questions on anatomy of inguinal canal so let us see how this inguinal canal question can be asked in the rs 4 cb mic curriculum in a structured way it can be asked as a long question describe the anatomy of inguinal canal under location and extent boundaries structure passing through anatomical base of inguinal hernia and add a note on its development with the following distribution of the marks and sometimes the anatomy of the inguinal canal can be asked as uh, explain or elaborate the defensive mechanisms of the inguinal canal so everybody have inguinal canal but everybody will not have inguinal hernia so what are the these defensive mechanisms which prevent the hernia from the occurrence in most of the people that is also a five mark question so let us begin this uh, anatomy of the inguinal canal with a case scenario and uh, usually sometimes a long essay question or a short essay question may proceed with the case scenario here a 45 year old man was shifting the furniture in preparation for his family's move to a new home when he strained to pick up a particularly heavy coffee table he suddenly felt a sharp pain in his left groin so remember here he has strained here strained means he has increased his intra abdominal pressure because of the straining because of that increase sudden increase in the intra abdominal pressure has caused sudden sharp pain in the left groin later he noticed that a painful bulge had developed in the groin painful bulge remember that swelling is there that has developed in the groin which disappeared when he lays on his back so when the pressure is released the swelling disappears and he did not like to like going to doctor like most of the patients in the indian setup they don't visit doctor until unless it is it is painful or it is uh, what you can say world world symptomatic or emergency condition so he ignored the condition after several months the pain and bulge in his groin increased and he finally consented to see a surgeon so swelling was like this on the left side of the groin on examination by the surgeon the swelling which began about the midway between the anterior superior spine and pubic symphysis progressed medially for about 4 cm and then turned towards scrotum so with the history physical examination and the surgical examination the surgeon made a diagnosis of inguinal hernia so so the anatomy of inguinal canal is of paramount importance in understanding the inguinal hernia and also in treating the inguinal hernia so what is hernia here hernia is extra vagination of the contents from one compartment to another compartment so in in layman terms hernia means inguinal hernia only but there are different types of hernia apart from inguinal hernia like umbilical femoral obturator diaphragmatic incisional tentorial hernia that we see in the in the skull so hernia means it is extra vagination of the contents from one compartment to another compartment so inguinal hernia you can see bilateral inguinal hernia sometimes they may be presented with the incarceration and strangulation that is when most of the patient visit to doctor and it's a emergency condition and not only in the adults hernia is also common in in newborn babies congenital hernias are common so with all these setup let us try to understand the anatomy of inguinal canal under these competencies as you already know so according to ashley cooper he accurately described that no disease of the human body belonging to the province of the surgeon which require in its treatment a greater combination of accurate anatomical knowledge with surgical skill than hernia in all its varieties that means hernia requires accurate anatomical knowledge here hernia is there in the inguinal canal inguinal canal is a is a potential defect it's a natural defect produced by the descent of testis okay so it's a natural defect which has its own defensive mechanisms it usually do not occur but if there is any increase in the abdominal pressure like in the case scenario we have seen where the patient strained and there may be other conditions which increase the intraabdominal pressure like uh, copd okay persistent cough and uh, anything uh, uh, what you can say constipation 
okay difficult micturition any any abdominal tumor these are all the backdrops or or the or the history we have take which increase the intraabdominal pressure so that because of that increase intraabdominal pressure this potential defect becomes wider and there is herniation or extra ulcer contents from abdomen to extra abdominal areas are you following so according to ashley cooper so the knowledge of anatomy is very important here with the surgical skill to treat the hernia so here your defect you are treating the defect okay so let us try to understand the anatomy of inguinal canal under following headings first we'll see introduction we have already seen that definition location extent and size direction of the inguinal canal inlet outlet and boundaries the structures passing through it the development of inguinal canal and the defensive mechanisms and lastly brief note on inguinal hernia so let us see what is inguinal canal so it's a oblique musculo aponeurotic tunnel it's a oblique musculo aponeurotic tunnel present where in the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall above and parallel to medial half of inguinal ligament as you already know there are eight layers in the anterior abdominal wall skin superficial fascia external oblique internal oblique trans abdominis and then there is fascia transversalis extra peritoneal tissue and parietal peritoneum these are the eight layers of the anterior abdominal wall okay so it is present in the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall above and parallel to the medial half of the inguinal ligament and it extends from deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring so first of all we should understand it is a musculo aponeurotic tunnel it is a canal formed by the muscles and aponeurosis and where it is present in the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall above and parallel to medial half of inguinal ligament it is neither horizontal nor vertical it is an oblique musculo aponeurotic tunnel extending from deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring so once you see here yes this is the the yellow arrow is showing the location of the inguinal canal there extending from the extending above and parallel to the medial half of the inguinal ligament denoted by the green arrow there and it extends from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring that is superficial inguinal ring you can see a oblique triangular defect in the external oblique aponeurosis is called as the uh, superficial inguinal ring and there is an oval defect in the fascia transversalis is called as deep inguinal ring so it extends from deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring so you can notice there so you can see this is the inguinal canal you can see extending from deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring that is a superficial inguinal ring oblique triangular gap in the external oblique aponeurosis just above and lateral to pubic tubercle and uh, pubic crest there whereas that is the deep inguinal ring present half inch above the mid inguinal point it's a defect in the fascia transversalis and that much is the inguinal canal so it's a musculo aponeurotic canal present above the ligament which ligament inguinal ligament inguinal ligament is also called as paupert's ligament it is formed by the the aponeurosis of the external oblique aponeurosis extending from anterior superior spine to the pubic tubercle we will see that so size it roughly around 4 cm in length specifically some book mentioned 3.8 cm in length and direction it is directed downwards forwards and medially so even in the case scenario we have seen the hernia hernia was traveling downwards forwards and medially towards the scrotum so you can notice there this is the location of the inguinal canal and you can see inferior epigastric vessels cross medial to the deep inguinal ring what is the importance of that we'll see next in the further slides so coming to the layers of the anterior abdominal wall so from anterior to posterior in the anterior abdominal wall you can see the skin then superficial layer superficial layer is splits into two layers superficial fat fatty layer called as campus fascia and deep membranous layer called as carpus fascia then you have three muscular layer musculo aponeurotic layer remember anterior abdominal wall do not have deep fascia these muscle only act as deep fascia because they have a fleshy part and a aponeurotic part these muscles along with the rectus abdominis and rectus sheath they prevent the the contents of the abdomen 
so these are the different layers coming to the inlet also called as what deep inguinal ring or internal ring it's an oval opening in the fascia transversalis that is the sixth layer of anterior abdominal wall and present about half inch 1.25 cm above the mid inguinal point above the mid inguinal point and size it will vary and it is larger in the male because of the descent of testis whereas in females the testis will not descend there the round ligament of uterus will be there which is a remnant of gubernaculum ovary you can see can notice there once you take out the internal wall just above the inguinal ligament you can notice that is the deep inguinal ring through that the testis is descending from the posterior abdominal wall remember during development the testis will be there in the posterior abdominal wall at the level of l2 from there it, it derives the testicular artery from the abdominal aorta and it will pass through all these layers except the first layer that is beneath the skin so you can see it is passing through fascia transversalis then transabdominus internal oblique external oblique in the external oblique it is coming out and descending into the scrotum you can notice there the deep inguinal ring is a defect it's a oval defect in which layer sixth layer whereas superficial inguinal ring is a oblique triangular defect in the third layer skin and superficial fascia are first and second layers so it is a oblique canal extending from sixth layer to third layer so it is passing through all these layers so all these layers form one or the other boundary of inguinal canal and it is present above which ligament inguinal ligament you can notice that that is a deep inguinal ring and coming to the superficial inguinal ring it's a oblique triangular gap in the third layer that is external oblique aponeurosis located above and lateral to pubic crest you can notice there the finger is pointing in the this superficial inguinal ring you can notice this is a, there will be pubic symphysis pubic crest pubic tubercle so it is present above and lateral to pubic crest it has two crests medial crest and lateral crest around 2 cm in the width and 1.25 cm in the in the length that is the, the, the uh, those are the dimensions of the superficial inguinal ring you can see the lateral crest is attached to this pubic tubercle medial crest is attached to pubic crest so it's a oblique triangular opening in the external oblique aponeurosis whereas the deep inguinal ring will be here here just above half inch above the mid inguinal point as a oval opening in which layer sixth layer that is the fascia transversalis so if you see here in this video so you can see the inguinal ligament is there there is the anterior superior spine pubic symphysis pubic tubercle there and you can see the deep inguinal ring is a is a oval opening present half inch above the mid inguinal point whereas the the superficial lingual ring is a defect in the external oblique aponeurosis it's a oblique triangular opening and that is how the testis will descend from the posterior abdominal wall and then passing through the layers of the anterior abdominal wall and coming out through this superficial lingual ring and as we have discussed it is a oblique musculoaponeurotic canal it has the two rings one is deep in a deep and one other is superficial inguinal ring but it has four boundaries it has a anterior wall posterior wall roof and floor so if you remember it like a box it has a roof and anterior wall floor and posterior wall with the deep inguinal ring towards lateral side and the superficial inguinal ring towards the medial side so like this you can imagine a box and next if you take out the roof you can see here anterior wall the posterior wall in the posterior wall you can see deep inguinal ring in the anterior wall you can see superficial inguinal ring so it is a oblique aponeurotic opening and a floor floor is formed by the inguinal ligament that we will discuss so this is how the orientation of inguinal canal should be kept in the mind like a box with the two openings so coming to the anterior boundary entirely formed by the first and second layer that is skin and superficial fascia and external oblique aponeurosis so all these three layers of anterior abdominal wall form the anterior boundary of the inguinal canal in the entire extent whereas 
it is strengthened in the lateral one third by the origin of internal oblique internal oblique aponeurosis so anterior wall is mainly formed by the aponeurosis external oblique in the entire extent and in the lateral one third by the internal oblique aponeurosis remember here lateral one third is the lateral one third of inguinal canal whereas the internal oblique takes origin from the lateral two third of the inguinal ligament but inguinal canal is present only in the medial half of the inguinal ligament above and parallel to the medial half of inguinal ligament so lateral one third of the inguinal uh, boundary is formed by the internal oblique you can notice there in the entire extent formed by the skin superficial fascia and external oblique lateral one third you can see internal oblique muscle is there internal oblique you can notice here external oblique aponeurosis is there in the entire extent whereas in the lateral one third you can see internal oblique is there lateral one third internal oblique is there you can notice that is the external oblique aponeurosis if you take out that then you can see internal oblique in the lateral one third of the anterior boundary of inguinal canal you can notice one more thing here if you reflect the this external oblique aponeurosis you can notice the internal oblique forming the lateral one third of the anterior boundary of inguinal canal you can notice there so coming to the roof roof is formed by the arched fibers of internal oblique and transverse abdominis remember this inguinal canal is formed by the descent of testis passing from the the fascia transversalis then it is there the sixth layer then passing through transverse abdominis it is passing beneath the transverse abdominis and also fibers of internal oblique causing the arching of the fibers of both internal oblique and transverse abdominis so you can see here it is passing through beneath both the fibers of this you can see transverse abdominis and internal oblique they are arching over it because of the protrusion because of the protrusion i told you inguinal canal is formed by the protrusion created by the descent of testis through all the layers of anterior abdominal wall and it is descending into scrotum you can notice there you can notice that is the trans abdominis then you can see internal oblique the arching of the uh, fourth and fifth layers there internal oblique and trans abdominis two muscles form the roof of the inguinal canal because it is a oblique musculo aponeurotic canal you can see the conjoint tendon that is there conjoint tendon is formed because the conjoint tendon is is the medial strengthening formed by the the tendons of both trans abdominis and internal oblique they combine to form conjoint tendon about that we will discuss but here we are talking about roof the roofing is formed by the arched fibers of two muscles that is internal oblique and transverse abdominis and coming to the floor floor is formed by two ligaments inguinal ligament and strengthened in the medial one fourth by the lacunar ligament so in the entire extent the floor is formed by the inguinal ligament because we have we have been discussing about the location of the inguinal canal present above and lateral above and medial to the uh, medial half of the inguinal ligament so that is there you can see entire extent is formed by the inguinal ligament and also lacunar ligament so the floor is formed by inguinal ligament and inguinal ligament will give three extensions remember that inguinal ligament has three extensions that is one is lacunar ligament because it is a half moon shape like a lac like a lacuna pectinate ligament and reflected part of inguinal ligament like this if you just take out the spermatic cord and its contents aside you can notice the inguinal ligament is giving three extensions it is attached to pubic tubercle and then there it is winding laterally here forming a lacunar ligament and extending attached to the superior pubic ramus as pectinal ligament of cooper and towards the linea alba it is giving a reflected inguinal ligament these are the three extensions of the inguinal ligament these are surgically very important in treating the inguinal hernia and preventing the recurrence of the hernia okay inguinal ligament then you can see lacunar ligament then you can see pectinal ligament and reflected part of the inguinal ligament these are the three extensions 
or parts of the inguinal ligament so let us try to see here so far we have seen where is the location of the inguinal canal it will be there in the lower part of the anteroderm wall above and parallel to the middle of the inguinal ligament and in the anteroderm wall you have seen the eight layers first when you take out the skin then there will be superficial fascia superficial fatty layer is not visible here you can see this is the superficial membranous layer here this is the deep membranous layer below the umbilicus the superficial fascia of the anteroderm wall will split into a superficial fatty layer and deep membranous layer once you take out the membranous layer you can see this is the external oblique aponeurosis external oblique aponeurosis that is the external oblique aponeurosis you can notice there and here you can see the superficial inguinal ring this is the inguinal ligament this whole thing is inguinal ligament formed by the doubling up of the external oblique aponeurosis so that is inguinal ligament attached lateral to the anterospinal spine medial to the pubic tubercle pubic tubercle here and inguinal canal is present here above and parallel to the middle half of the inguinal ligament and as you can see the this is the external oblique aponeurosis this is superficial inguinal ring this is superficial inguinal ring then you can see internal oblique muscle forming the arching here you can see the arching of the fibers here and it is giving some fibers as cremastic muscle you can see and then you can see transversus abdominis you can notice here the inguinal canal is going beneath the transverse abdominis but it is going through external oblique and internal oblique and here is the deep inguinal ring this is the superficial inguinal ring and this is conjoint tendon conjoint tendon when so take out conjoint tendon yes here you can see this much is the inguinal canal so there you can see the extensions of the inguinal ligament what are the parts of the inguinal ligament if you just uh, take out here isolate the inguinal ligament yes if you zoom in here that is lacunar ligament that is the pectineal ligament so you can see yes like this this is inguinal ligament this is lacunar ligament half moon shape this is pectineal ligament and this is a reflected part of inguinal ligament these are the parts of the inguinal ligament understand that so in the entire extent the floor is formed by inguinal ligament whereas the medial 1/4 is formed by the lacunar ligament remember so far we have discussed about the anterior wall which is formed by mainly two aponeurosis external oblique and internal oblique the roof is formed by two muscles arched fibers of internal oblique and transversus abdominis floor is formed by two ligaments entire extent what inguinal ligament medial 1/4 by the lacunar ligament lacunar ligament so coming to the posterior boundary the entire it is done by the fascia transversalis enter done by fascia transversalis that is the sixth layer whereas medial it is strengthened by the conjoint tendon what is conjoint tendon it is combined by the tendons of internal oblique and the transverse abdominis and also by the reflected part of inguinal ligament so you can notice there entire extent what is there fascia transversalis then you will see conjoint tendon medially medially in the medial half formed by the tendons of transverse abdominis and internal oblique you can see here so here is the inguinal canal posterior wall entire extent by the transversalis fascia then conjoint tendon conjoint tendon here formed by what internal oblique plus transverse abdominis so you can notice there so you can remember the boundaries of the uh, what you can think inguinal canal the roof is formed by two muscles anterior wall is formed by two aponeurosis whereas floor or inferior wall is formed by two ligaments whereas the posterior wall is formed by two t's transversalis fascia in the entire extent and a conjoint tendon in the medial half so remember two malt 2m 2a 2l 2t 2m are forming the roof that is arch fibers of two muscles internal oblique and uh, transverse abdominis anterior wall is formed by 2a two aponeurosis external oblique in the entire extent and in the lateral one third by internal oblique 2l are forming the 
floor that is two ligament lacunar ligament in the medial one fourth inguinal ligament in the anterior extent then 2t that is the transversal fascia and conjunct tendon transversal fascia forms the entire the posterior wall in the anterior extent and uh, conjunct tendon in the medial half of the this posterior wall along with the reflected part of the inguinal ligament so remember the mnemonic has two malt to m to a to l to t then the structure passing through the inguinal canal as we have already discussed the spermatic cord in males whereas the round ligament of uterus will pass through the inguinal canal as the entire content but the partial content is ileo inguinal nerve ileo inguinal nerve will pierce through the posterior boundary it will not enter the inguinal canal via deep inguinal ring it will not enter that but it will come out through superficial inguinal ring but it will enter through the posterior wall by piercing the posterior wall of the inguinal canal and development how does this inguinal canal develops as i told you it develops due to the i told you inguinal canal is a potential defect physiological defect in the lower part of the anterior wall produced by the descent of testes why testes should descend because it has to maintain the temperature less than the normal abdominal temperature it will descend by the help of this gubernaculum testes gubernaculum testes fibromuscular band which will pull it towards this scrotum that is called as gubernaculum whereas in females the gubernaculum will form the round ligament of uterus in females ovaries are not outside the pelvis they are within the pelvis because they don't have to maintain the temperature because whatever the number of follicles required for the entire menstrual cycle menstrual life of a woman they are already there before the birth they don't require any temperature regulation so it is produced as an evagination in the lower part of the anterior wall around 8 weeks due to the gubernaculum the locus of this evag evagination gubernaculum test will that uh, pull the testes and this process occurs both in both males and females but in males gubernaculum shortens causing the testes to descend whereas in females only gubernaculum will descend there as a round ligament of uterus but this natural defect is not prone for hernia in everyone isn't it why because there are some defensive mechanisms preventing the herniation okay body has the defensive mechanisms to prevent the herniation first one is obliquity of the inguinal canal because it is extending from the sixth layer to third layer of the anterior wall in a oblique fashion so the entire anterior wall will act as a flap wall preventing the extravasation next is construction of the canal is oblique and formed by muscles upon the ligament so it is fibromuscular tunnel and shutter wall met of internal oblique if you see internal oblique it is forming the anterior wall the roof and posterior wall so one in once internal oblique contracts it will block the inguinal canal in three ways in the anterior wall roof and posterior wall acting as a shutter wall and cremastic muscle it will pull the testes upwards in a cremastic reflex like a ball valve mechanism so remember flap wall shutter wall ball wall and slit wall mechanism of the superficial inguinal ring it is oblique triangular opening it will it is produced by the external oblique apothesis that will also prevent the extra vasation of the contents so remember these four walls flap wall shutter wall ball valve and slit valve these are the four mechanisms which prevent the hernia and also the tone of the anterior wall muscles uh, play a huge role in maintaining the defensive role of the inguinal canal hormones are also there so coming to the inguinal hernia with this much knowledge about the the construction <coughs> and structure of the inguinal canal let us see what is inguinal hernia inguinal hernia make up the predominant portion of the abdominal wall hernias and they are most common hernias in male than females why because in males it is wider because of the descent of testes and there are two types of inguinal hernia depending upon the the types and occurrence we call them as direct and indirect hernias indirect hernias they pass the course of inguinal canal that is extending from the deep inguinal to superficial inguinal ring they pass along the 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 uh, what you can say the direction of the inguinal canal whereas direct inguinal hernia come as a defect in the 
anterior abdominal wall the direct ingual hernia is common in old age due to lack of tone of the abdominal wall muscles whereas indirect hernia is common in young age it is due to the uh, what you can say due to the pull of the gubernatorial condition and and also uh, patent processus vaginalis which is paving the way for the contents to pass from abdomen to scrotum so you can remember here indirect ingual hernia it will occur at the it will enter at the deep ingual ring and travel the full length of canal and it may enter through superficial ingual ring it may be congenital or acquired and you can see there are other types of congenital hernias vaginal funicular babunocele so direct ingual hernia it will act or it will come through the anterior abdominal wall and there is a, a surgical triangle is there hasselbeck triangle through that it will occur and the boundaries of the hasselbeck triangle are very very important you can see the borders here just a moment hello, hello. yes hasselbeck triangle medially it has the lateral boundary of the rectus abdominis and laterally by the inferior epigastric vessels which are present medial to deep ingual ring as inferiorly formed by the inguinal ligament so you can see here so here will be the hasselbeck's triangle hasselbeck's triangle through that the direct hernia will will descend or occur through the hasselbeck's triangle so coming to our question what was our question describe the anatomy of ingual canal under location and extent boundary structure passing through it anatomical base of ingual hernia and add a note on its development so let us see the question one by one so first let us see the location first we will draw anterospinal spine pubic symphysis pubic tubercle draw the ingual ligament extending from the anterospinal spine to pubic tubercle and you can show deep ingual ring and superficial ingual ring and join this by a oblique tunnel this is the uh, what you can say location and the extent of the ingual canal and you can we have already discussed that superficial ingual ring is a oblique triangular defect in the third layer that is external oblique aponeurosis present above and lateral to pubic crest the lateral crest attached to pubic tubercle medial crest to the pubic crest and this is the deep ingual ring half inch above the mid ingual point mid ingual point is the midpoint between anterospinal spine and pubic symphysis here midpoint half inch above that in the sixth layer that is fascia transversalis next if you see the ingual hernia in the sagittal section you will understand that so first let us draw that is the skin that is the pubic bone pubic symphysis superficial then you will see external oblique aponeurosis attached to pubic symphysis there fascia lata is below there and then you will see internal oblique muscle transverse abdominis muscle they form the conjoint tendon then the fourth layer that is there this is fascia transversalis extra pertinent tissue parietal peritoneum and here is this permetic cord with the contents there and here is the ilio ingual ring nerve this is the sagittal section of the ingual canal you can see the anterior boundary the roof and floor and posterior wall here anterior boundary you can see skin superficial fascia deep membranous layer external oblique aponeurosis and the internal oblique roof is formed by arch fibers of internal oblique and transverse abdominis posterior wall is formed by conjoint tendon and fascia transversalis floor is formed by inguinal ligament this is how you see the ingual canal in sagittal section next the anterior wall the anterior wall is formed and i show again same anterior superior spine and pubic symphysis pubic crest pubic tubercle inguinal ligament and you can see this superficial ingual ring and deep ingual ring this is the canal in the entire extent the anterior wall is formed by skin superficial fascia and external oblique aponeurosis whereas in the lateral one third it is formed by the 
internal oblique muscle internal oblique muscle takes origin from the lateral to the of the inguinal ligament and uh, the intermediate lip of the iliac crest but lateral one third of it will form the anterior wall anterior wall coming to the roof and posterior wall again we will draw yes and the pelvic spine pubic crest pubic tubercle and you can see the roof is formed by what the arched fibers of internal oblique and transverse abdominis transverse abdominis and medially behind the inguinal canal they form a conjoint tendon shown in the green color there you can see and the entire posterior wall is formed by the fascia transversalis shown in the blue color so remember roof is formed by arch fibers of internal oblique and transverse abdominis whereas the posterior wall in the entire direction formed by the fascia transversalis and conjoint tendon so floor floor is formed by what already we have discussed floor is formed by the the inguinal ligament and lacrimal ligament coming to some mcqs on this topic here so all the following ligaments are derived from inguinal ligament except so which ligament is not derived from the inguinal ligament lacrimal is a part pectoral ligament and refractory part of inguinal ligament these are the three parts of inguinal ligament we have discussed this interfoveolar ligament is not a part of inguinal ligament it is derived from fascia transversalis okay select the incorrect statement about the conjoint tendon conjoint tendon is formed by what two muscles what and what internal oblique and transverse abdominis yes first one is correct it forms the middle half of the posterior inguinal canal correct it is attached to pubic crest and pectoral pubis correct it is formed by fusion of external oblique and internal oblique no d is the answer third one all the statements about hasselbeck triangles are correct except it lies superficial to inguinal canal it is bounded laterally by the inferior epigastric artery yes bounded medially by the lateral border of the rectus abdominis yes it is bounded inferiorly by the inguinal ligament yes so answer is the first one the mid inguinal point is a point midway between what and what pubic symphysis and anterior superior iliac spine the point between the pubic tubercle and anterior superior spine is midpoint of inguinal ligament midpoint of inguinal ligament remember that regarding inguinal canal all the statements are true except it's an intermuscular slit in the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall it is about 4 cm long it provides passage to spermatic cord the iliac inguinal nerve enters it through the deep inguinal ring the iliac inguinal nerve do not enter the inguinal canal through deep inguinal ring it will enter through posterior wall so answer is d select the incorrect statement about the direct inguinal hernia i told you direct inguinal hernia usually occur through which area hasselbeck's triangle the hernial sac enters the inguinal canal pushing the posterior wall of inguinal canal yes the neck of the hernial sac lies medial to the inferior epigastric vessels yes the neck of the direct inguinal hernia is narrow as compared to that of indirect inguinal hernia is it so no because the neck of the direct inguinal hernia is wide because it is passing through the anterior wall it is less commonly strangulated as compared to indirect yes because it is coming through a wider area than the indirect hernia indirect hernia is happening through the deep inguinal ring lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels and then entering the whole course of the inguinal canal so the answer is c the neck of direct inguinal hernia will not be narrow compared to that of indirect inguinal hernia clear so hope you got the idea about the anatomy of inguinal canal something has herniated into your brain thank you for your time and patience hope i did justice to this discussion and if anything needs improvement please comment please come back with the doubts or anything corrections or mistakes which i have done knowingly or unknowingly clear so if you want anything in 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 a elaborate way please comment and follow white army thank you
Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. It was indeed a very comprehensive class and uh, we really loved it, sir. Thank you Thank so you. much because you uh, have taken so many classes starting from uh, anatomy of thyroid gland, thyroid thyroid gland and inguinal canal and dural uh, venous sinuses. Everything is an important topic, sir. And you have made it so easy for us and we are very thankful to you and we need your guidance and support throughout, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you for the Thank you for the opportunity, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. And uh, Vitamin members, if you want any other topic to be taught, please do comment in the comment section. Uh, it will yes, be sir. redirected to the sir. And yeah, we'll catch up soon in the next session. Till then, goodbye.